not going to happen overnight, but we do think that there's some hope we can get back on track and get into the playoffs. The New York Knicks, they have been abysmal. They are an atrocity of the highest order. The Knicks are ready to officially rule out Carmelo Anthony for the rest of the season. You hear more and more about tanking now than ever. Now everybody's talking about the Knicks. They need to just lose. Losing was, you know, part of the equation to deal with the draft, to deal with the free agent market. It gives us some hope in the future. Loyal Knicks fans are, are listening and watching, and it's disgraceful. Joining us now is an award-winning actor, director, writer, and producer, Spike Lee. Spike is the Grand Marshal of the New York City Marathon. That takes place this Sunday. Coverage on ESPN2. Thank you so much for Glad being here Glad to be here. here. Welcome back. What's up? We're going to get to the marathon My in a man. minute. <laughs> but first, we need to talk some hopes. Yes. And I so appreciate how loyal you are to your Knicks. ESPN is giving them a 1% chance of making the playoffs. Let's just get right into it. 1%? Yeah. Are they playoff bound? <laughs> are they going to defy these odds? we got to win more than 17 games, though, right, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no. yeah I'm trying to figure out where the hell the 1% came from. I'm trying to figure out where the hell the 1% came Bas from. Who was the 1%? Basketball I want to know who they are. Yeah. I want to know. Well, don't get me started. Carmelo's health. The season hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Tranquilo. Tranquilo. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm trying. I'm, 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 I'm trying to be positive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I mean, it's funny. I read the New York Times this morning driving here and it said that New York Knicks are undefeated. Yep, they haven't played a game yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be at the garden in my seats courtside tomorrow night. I know they open in Milwaukee. Milwaukee is a, a great young team. Mm -hmm. Jason Kidd, I think, is underrated he is. As, as a coach. And uh, I'm looking, I'm hoping, praying for the best. Orange and blue. So that's a no. They're uh, not playoff. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a no. You, Look, you dodged it nicely, though. I just want to see a competitive team. You know, okay. I really, let's, last, last year, that was, it was the worst season in the history of the franchise. And they're one of the, Core, you know, cornerstone, yeah. cornerstone of yeah. the NBA. Well, yeah. Skip Bayless, uh, uh, Spike, you, you, you know, you, you and I, we, we, we could talk about this on national TV. I actually called Spike Lee last year <laughs> and got on him, Skip, and jumped on him because I thought he was too damn supportive, and I blamed him. I held him partially responsible because I said, if you stop holding out hope, maybe change would come. Yep. Why don't you stop sitting up there and trying to feed these folks a, a ray of hope? I, we actually got in an argument because of that. Here's my thing. I'm going to sit there and give the Knicks an actual break. I look at this as hard as I've been on Phil Jackson. It's primarily because he tanked the season and then warned us ahead of time, really, to be honest with you. But when I think about it, Skip, I'm going to be nice to Phil Jackson. I'm going to think about Carmelo Anthony. I've always liked Aaron Aflalo. This kid, Porzingis, people tell me he has potential, okay? Jerry and Grant out of Notre Dame is not bad. No, he's and, good, you know, he's I, good. And I've always been a fan. He's good, and I've always been a fan of Clea Anthony Early from his days at Wichita State when I saw him doing the NCAA tournament. I think the kids got potential. So I'm going to give the Knicks a break. And, and you know something? If they can manage 30, 30 wins and be competitive for at least 65 games, just competitive where we don't know the outcome by the second quarter, I'll be thankful. <laughs> mm. So I'm going to take a quick left turn here. Your man, Carmelo Anthony, the other day made what, what came off to me as an offhand comment that also came off as taking a shot at the city of New York. Let's give it a listen and then I want to get your reaction. Okay. New York is a great city and a planet, I think. But if you're not a you're not a New Yorker, if you don't wake up some days and be like, man, f this place. Like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't care who you are. You can be the mayor, you can be the governor, all the way down to the mailman. Everybody wakes up some days and say, man, f New York. Look, so Carmelo, you, you, you I know. Ever think that? I, first of all, I, I claim Carmelo, he was born in Red Hook, Brooklyn. He was. And they have no problem with what, what he says. New York City is the greatest city on this God's planet. But it's hard. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And New York can beat you down. If you're not strong, you're going to be beat down. And so, what Carmelo, I echo what he said, but it, it's, you still love it, though. Mm -hmm. You still love it. But it's not easy. Have you and, ever and, and, gotten to that point where you say, heck with New York, so no, to speak? No, 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 no. But 
some, you know, I get mad when I can't get a cab <laughs> today. I hear you. You know, so they're just things yep. that that you have to deal with in New York, but you do despite that, it's the greatest city on the planet, and you just gotta be you gotta be built for it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's that's especially for athletes. All athletes can't play in New York. Well, they rather, they rather play in a market where they have one newspaper, and you know, yeah. if 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 you mess up here in New York, mm -hmm. it's horrible. But if you win, it's the greatest place ever. Make it in New York, make it anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Well, let me say this as a native New Yorker, Hollis Queens in the house. Let <laughs> Hollis, me be very, very clear. Uh, let, let Hollis, me, let me stand be, up. Let me, let me be very clear. That, that, that's right, Hollis, stand up. Let me be very very clear. Carmelo Anthony was one thousand percent right. He is absolutely right when he said, I mean, if he's ever proven that he's a New Yorker, it's with what he said, because that's exactly how we feel. If it's the great, and I wouldn't just say for athletes, Mike, I would say for anybody in the public eye. Yes. You better be on your game. You better have tough alligator skin. You better be able to you gotta take be on pride. point. You better be able to give it. You better be able to give it as much as you can take it, because sometimes you do wake up and say, man, hell with this. I'm, I'm tired of the traffic jams. I'm tired of the constructions. I'm damn sure tired of the poles. I'm tired of being having difficulty in catching a cab. All of that stuff, you go like this. Man, I don't need this. No, and, and, and the taxes, too. Let's not forget that. You look at all that, be like, man, I don't need this nonsense. He's absolutely right. True. True. There is nothing that he said that should be taken negatively. He spoke for all New Yorkers because any New Yorker that tells you they feel any differently than what Carmelo Anthony said from time to time is a damn liar. And they're not from New damn York. Damn liar. Mm -hmm. They're not a true New Yorker. That's right. And they're not from New York. Or both. Or both. Okay, I'm going to speak as a guy who actually lives in Manhattan. I live in Manhattan. Whatever. And I'm Whatever. here to suggest to both of you Knicks lovers <laughs> that... Carmelo is going to put himself on a little bit of a hot seat this year. That, because that's, that, because that's not, statement? Not just because of that, but there will be some Knicks fans who will say, well, you know, he didn't really show up last year. He didn't give me he was everything. Hurt. I know, but but was he really hurt? Was he, Should he have toughed it out and played more games? I know, I know. Tough it out for I'm what? Just, they won 17 I games. How much was he going to win? He's going to win three more games and play the whole season? Max money. Max money is what he is making. So you're he okay with that? He should have sat out earlier. What about your quarterback? Uh... Oh, now we're changing the subject. Oh, oh, Romo. Money? Romo. Yeah. He's is hurt. He... He broke you can't the collarbone. Are you sure, so, sir? So, Anthony, had a, a knee problem. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. You hurt. You hurt. Get him. Get him. Get him. Okay. You watch, whoa, whoa, whoa. How you watched the game? <laughs> huh? The Giants Cowboy game. Did I watch it? <laughs> I wish I hadn't watched it. Yeah, that's the point. Uh, yeah. Big blue in the house. Yeah, big blue in the house. <laughs> All right. Speaking I like of, him. Yeah, speaking of New York loyalty now. I, I heard a little exchange before the show, before this, this segment started. You, you, you guys are both supposed to be Yankee fans. I'm not sure about this guy, but he says he's a Yankee fan. No, but stop now it. he's stop supporting it. the Mets. Is that okay with you? Yes. yes. There's because. no law written that says you cannot support one team, specifically New York. You can be a Yankee fan and be happy that the Mets win the World Series. Are you happy? Yes. I want the Mets to win. Why? Who's in Kansas City? The Royals. So okay. you'd support the Nets after your Knicks? Let's leave basketball out of it. Case in point. I have, I have a different agenda. I have a different agenda, Spike. I have a different agenda okay. that I want I'm you to hear. I'm listening. Molly and Skip know this. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. No question. You know that. But when it comes to the Mets, especially with the Yankees not playing up to snuff, even though I was proud that they got to the postseason. And no one thought they were going to make the playoffs, the more too. Successful, that's right. I think the more successful the Mets are, the more that it heightens the level of urgency that the Yankees True. have that's a good in point. order to get back to where they once were. Because they ain't going to sit still and have New York <laughs> handed to the New York Mets. I love that. I love that. And, and, and even though I root for the Mets now because I want them to win, I root for them against anybody but the Yankees. The fact is, is that 
it's going to help the Yankees if they're walking around as champions this 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 offseason because the Yankees with George Steinbrenner's soul touching this franchise <laughs> he is not going to have that and they will elevate their level of urgency mm. what do you think about that well I'll tell you what I think about that I, I think it is a lame rationale oh. on your part why is that lame we know what you think the, we the, know what you think the, the I'm true spike the true Yankee fans I know, those who live in my building in Manhattan, oh, please. they you can't even speak the name Mets. They can't even speak the name Mets. That's true. The name Mets can't even come out of their mouth. That's a small, that, that's, there are people like that. Yeah, but also, there are. Steve and A and I are not the only Yankee fans, the voting Yankee fans, mm -hmm. who are happy that the Mets are in the World Series and want the Mets yeah. to win the World Series. I get it. And I'm a Giants fan, and if they stink it up, I'm not rooting for the Jets. Ah, <laughs> That's the last you. team. Well, thank you. But let's talk about you. Add another thing to your resume. Role as Grand Marshal of the New York City Marathon. First New Yorker. On Yorka. ESPN2. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, I got a call from my man, Chris Weiler, who used to be with the, the Knicks back in the glory days. He called me up out of the thin blue area. I hadn't talked in years. He said, we want you to be the Grand Marshal for the New York City Marathon. I said, what? You have Grand Marshal? said, no. We, we've only had... You will be the third and the first New Yorker. So I said, great. The marathon is one of the great sport, New York City marathon is. is one of the great sport yep. events in the world. And the, the route goes through my neighborhood in Fort Green, Brooklyn. So I saw it from a little kid growing up. And uh, I'm, I was just honored that I got uh, the Beautiful. chance. And so uh, going to all five boroughs, 50,000 runners. That's awesome. And it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take pictures. My wife, Tanya, is going to be in the car. We're going to be in a, cool. a convertible, Pontiac convertible, that will lead 50,000 oh, runners beautiful. through the five boroughs awesome. end up in Central Park. So it's going to be a great day. One of the coolest things you've ever done, right? It will be. Be up there. It will yeah. be. Sunday on ESPN2, we get to check it out. Thanks so much for being here. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. Good job. Good What's up? You, bro. See you soon. Bundle okay. up on Sunday. It's cold. It's cold. It's yeah, to it's gonna be hope cold. it doesn't rain. All right. It's not going to happen overnight, but we do think that there's some hope we can get back on track and get into the playoffs. The New York Knicks, they have been abysmal. They are an atrocity of the highest order. The Knicks are ready to officially rule out Carmelo Anthony for the rest of the season. You hear more and more about tanking now than ever. Now everybody's talking about the Knicks. They need to just lose. Losing was, you know, part of the equation to deal with the draft, to deal with the free agent market. It gives us some hope in the future. Loyal Knicks fans are, are listening and watching, and it's disgraceful. <laughs> Joining us now is an award-winning actor, director, writer, and producer, Spike Lee. Spike is the Grand Marshal of the New York City Marathon. That takes place this Sunday. Coverage on ESPN2. Thank you so much for Glad being here Glad to be here. With here. Us. Welcome back. What's up? We're going to get to the marathon My in a man. minute. Van it. <laughs> but first, we need to talk some hopes. Yes. And I so appreciate how loyal you are to your Knicks. ESPN is giving them a 1% chance of making the playoffs. Let's just get right into it. 1%? Yeah. Are they playoff bound? <laughs> are they going to defy these odds? we got to win more than 17 games, though, right, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Know. yeah think, I'm trying to figure out where the hell the 1% came from. I'm trying to figure out where the hell the 1% came Bas from. Who was the 1%? I want to know. Who they are. Yeah. I want to know. Well, don't get me started. Carmelo's health. The disease hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Tranquilo. Tranquilo. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm trying. I'm, 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 I'm trying to be positive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I mean, it's funny. I read the New York Times this morning driving here, and it said that New York Knicks are undefeated. Yep, they haven't played a game yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be at the Garden. My seat's courtside tomorrow night. I know they open in Milwaukee. Milwaukee is a, a great young team. Mm -hmm. Jason Kidd, I think, is underrated he is. As, as a coach. And uh, I'm looking, I'm hoping, praying for the best. Orange and blue. So that's a no. They're uh, not playoff. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a no. I, you, look, you dodged it nicely, though. I just want to see a competitive team. You know, okay. I really, let's, last, last year, that was, it was the worst season in the history of the franchise. Wow. And they're one of the, Core, you know, cornerstone, yeah. cornerstone of the yeah. NBA. Well, yeah. Skip Bayless, uh, uh, Spike, you, you, you know, you, you and I, we, we, we could talk about this on national TV. I 
actually called Spike Lee last year <laughs> and got on him, Skip, and jumped on him because I thought he was too damn supportive, and I blamed him. I held him partially responsible because I said, if you stop holding out hope, maybe change would come. Yep. Why don't you stop sitting up there and trying to feed these folks a, a ray of hope? I, we actually got in an argument because of that. Here's my thing. I'm going to sit there and give the Knicks an actual break. I look at this as hard as I've been on Phil Jackson. It's primarily because he tanked the season and then warned us ahead of time, really, to be honest with you. But when I think about it, Skip, I'm going to be nice to Phil Jackson. I'm going to think about Carmelo Anthony. I've always liked Aaron Afloy.